In this video, let's find the prot routine that's the right one for you. What about this fricative continuum? Looks pretty cute. Remember the good times we had with fricative continua a few videos ago? Mm, that was the past. Let's move on. Swipe left. What about a fricative African continuum? Should choose me? Mm, no, we've, we've been there and done that already. Let's move on. Um, what about this formant continuum? That requires a lot more attention than I have right now. Um, I'm not quite ready for that commitment yet. Let's swipe left on that. Um, VOT continuum, this, this looks pretty attractive to me. Um, I feel like we've been learning a little bit about that. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is the one. Let's, let's see what else is out there. What is, uh, oh, what is this? A continuum involving VOT and F0? I will swipe right on that every time. So we're talking about voice onset time and fundamental frequency. So we can change voice onset time in the same ways that we have been in recent videos. But one thing that you'll notice in the literature is that as VOT changes, F0 also changes. This should make sense because as you're building up air pressure that corresponds to the aspirated sound like a T, you're going to change the tension in the vocal folds creating a higher pitch sound. So these two cues really go together in terms of articulation and we use both of them in our auditory system to categorize voicing. So we can combine these cues together in our prot script or alternatively for every version of our VOT we can create a whole host of different F0s that correspond to it. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use the same VOT script that we've been using in recent videos. I'm going to run it, and this time I'm going to pay some closer attention to some of these parameters. I still want seven different steps of VOT that change between 10 and 70 milliseconds. The F0 what I'm going to do is covary it in tandem with the VOT. And what this option means is that however many steps I have for VOT, that's the number of steps in the continuum, and whatever I put here is going to be ignored. You might even say ghosted. So these two values now have some importance. What this means is that whatever F0 is at the start of the vowel, at the voiced end of the continuum, is going to be lowered by 5 hertz and at the aspirated or voiceless end of the continuum, it's going to be raised by 25 hertz. Now, what does that mean? Well, they're set relative to the original F0 in the sound. So if we call up the sound with D onset, here's the word dear, and if I turn on the pitch contour, we can see that at the onset of this vowel, the fundamental frequency is 121 hertz. So what we should expect after we run the script is that it should be 5 less than that, and then 25 more than that at the other end of the continuum. Now, the other thing I'm going to change about this is that I'm not going to save any files because we're just not at that point in our relationship yet. So let's run the script. I'm going to select the voiced onset sound, dear, and then the voiceless onset sound, tear. Now you recall from earlier videos that because these are the demonstration sounds, all the landmarks will be automatically selected by the script. So I'm going to press continue, 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 and we have our continuum. So you can see the changes in voice onset time in terms of the aspiration duration, but what I also want to draw your attention to is the pitch contour. At the voiced end, where we hear the duh sound, Dear. we have a pitch contour that starts pretty low and then rises up before falling down in its natural contour. So we have a pitch a fundamental frequency of 117, which is lower than it started, and at the other end we have an estimated pitch of 145. We're going to have two different cues in our voicing continuum ranging from deer to tear. So see if you can pick out the change in pitch as we move across this continuum. Deer. Tear, 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 tear. Okay, so let's start over again, but with a different goal. 
Now, some of you enterprising phoneticians out there might be willing to move to the next step and not just co-vary F0 and VOT in tandem, but rather control them separately. So, that for every one of my seven steps of VOT, I'm going to produce five steps of F0. Now, you can change those numbers. I can produce 30 VOT steps and 20 steps of F0, but that's going to give me so many stimuli in the end that I just don't want to waste the time in producing that many. So let's keep the numbers small. I'm going to produce five steps of VOT and five steps of F0. Otherwise, I'm going to keep these parameters the same. I'm going to keep the range going from minus 5 to plus 25, and I'm not going to save any files. We'll just talk about that later. Okay, let's run the script. The voice don't set sound is deer, there's tear, and these are the demo sounds, so I'm just going to let it choose by landmarks. There we go. So it's going to take a little bit more time, and this time it's not going to present me with that nicely formatted continuum, because there are 25 of these. So let's think about how we want to order these. So if I'm just interested in comparing VOT, I'm going to compare step one, step two, three, four, and five, and notice how I've selected the third step of F0 for all of these. So if I try to concatenate these recoverably, I have my voice onset time continuum. Dear, 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 dear. And notice how the F0 contour in all of these is exactly the same. This is the third step of the F0 continuum. However, if I take the first step of VOT, but all five steps of the F0 continuum and put those together recoverably, now we can hear that all of these will sound like D, but with a different pitch. Dear, 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 dear. So the one at the end here on the left dear. is the one that's going to sound the most voiced because the voiced sound should have a lower F0 at the start, whereas a high F0 at the start is really more indicative of aspiration or voicelessness. So with the script menu back up on the screen, we can do this a couple of other different ways. So in this case, I've set the F0 relative to whatever it already is in the sound file. But suppose I want to not do it that way, but declare an actual fundamental frequency that I want to start it out as. So suppose I want to start it at 130 hertz, and I want to end it at 150 hertz. Okay, we can do that. Um, I'm still going to control these separately this time. Okay, I still have seven steps of VOT. I'm not going to save any files this time, but stay tuned. Let's run the script. Dear, tier, there's my landmark, there's my landmark, there's another landmark there. And we're done. So let's call up the five steps corresponding to the first step in the VOT continuum and take a look. Now the first one starts at right around 130 hertz, and the last one has about 150 hertz. So you can either declare it to whatever the F0 would have been or declare an absolute number if you really want that extra control. So let's think about another thing we might want to do, which is to control VOT, but not change anything about the F0. So one way of doing this is just to set both of these numbers to be the same value. For example, five. So in this case, it'll create seven steps of VOT, and the F0 is just going to remain at plus five relative to whatever it was at the start of the vowel onset. And this time I'm going to co-vary them in tandem the way we started. And should I save these files? No. Let's see what we have. Deer and tear. These are the demo sounds, so it's going to automatically select our landmarks. Right there. There's a landmark. 
and here we have a continuum. So as we can see here, the VOT is changing and gradually getting longer across the continuum, but the F0 contour is really remaining quite stable. It starts around 126, and it ends around 126. So that little variation in what we saw there, 125.6 versus 126.1, this is really just some estimation error depending on exactly what pixel I'm clicking on. The final detail that we haven't talked about so far with regard to F0 changes in the VOT continuum is this final number of F0 time range in milliseconds. What this means is that as we're cutting into the vowel and changing the F0 contour, we're going to start where that boundary was, and the changes that we're going to apply to the F0 contour will apply to about 75 milliseconds of that contour. So as you can see, that's sort of where this anchor point is um, in this sound right here. And we can make this longer or shorter, but I chose this number because it's a pretty good estimate of the range over which the F0 perturbation caused by the larynx should exert itself over the course of the vowel. So in the next video, we'll continue exploring some extra details of this script and move on to some more complicated procedures for those of you who are interested in learning more about this VOT Continuum script.